Unit 4. Welcome to the unit Manufacturing Systems. In this unit, you will review various manufacturing systems and their components. This unit comprises of two modules and a final review section that invites you to reflect on what you have learned. By the end of this unit, students will be able to describe the various types of production systems, identify the basic components of a production system, In this unit, we will be understanding and studying about the basic components of a production system, which are categorized based on the following. The degree of sectionalization, bundle type and size, methods of movement and storage, production flow and storage patterns, and control. In this, the degree of sectionalization has already been discussed in Unit 3. We would be studying in detail about the various bundle types, the different methods of movement and storage used in the apparel industry, the various types of production flow and storage pattern currently followed in the garment industry and the control over it. Let's start with the types of bundles. There are varying different types of bundle categorization in which the cut pieces of garments move in the sewing floor. Ideally, in this unit, we would be discussing about how the pieces are being moved, in what form and in what way inside the sewing section. So, when we talk about bundles, the first type of bundle movement would be tied bundles. Here, the bundles are tied wherein the advantage of this type of bundle movement is that it is cheap. Cutting room waste can be used as tie-offs. The disadvantages, however, are time wasted in tying and untying of the bundle. Further, garment parts may get creased or soiled. Another type of bundle movement generally used in the garment industry are bags. Bags are used where bundles are large and where creasing is not important. Bags are dragged onto the floor due to which they get torn and let in dirt. Bags are generally used in areas such as movement of cut parts from the cutting section to the sewing section. Another form and variation of bundles is called pocketed bags. Pocketed bags are used for parts, trimming and in simple hanging systems wherein they are better to go in pocketed bundles and they do not have any lint and thread. As garment parts are in the bags, they are made less accessible to the operators but are heavily used in simple hanging systems. Next, we move on to a type of bundles generally known as box and baskets. The garment parts may have some creasing. It is easy to stack boxes in storage and is useful with the conveyor belt system. The bag has a pocket outside to hold documents. The frames may come with wheels. It is also used to stack boxes in storage. So, generally these are used in conveyor belt system of sewing. Another variation are clamps on rail. Clamps on wheels are useful for sewing long garment parts. Garment parts can be sewed without removing it from the camp and are generally moved overhead. Examples of clamps on rails could be finishing of a bottom of a trouser wherein the trouser piece is not removed from the clamp and are sewn 
directly on the sewing machine without the operator removing the piece. Another variation of bundles are clamps on cords. In this system, cloth pegs are tied and attached to a nylon cord. This runs on an overhead rail system. One of the major examples is Swift Track where they use clamps on cord system of bundle drying. An alternative again would be bundle trucks. These are big trolleys for carrying bundles, ideally used in between let's say cutting to sewing or from sewing to finishing. Now that we have studied about bundle movement, let us move on to understand the method of movement of WIP. WIP can be moved by different methods, by hand, roller conveyor, trolley or by rail. This WIP refers to the movement of parts in between departments. It can be moved by hand which is the traditional way or by roller conveyor wherein the conveyor belt moves and there are boxes kept over it. So that refers to roller conveyor. Another method is by trolley wherein the wheels are under the boxes or it could be wheeled bins or it could be a combination trolley. The final method would be by rail wherein the WIP would be moved on hangers with clamps, boxes or combination cords. Types of production flow Production flow usually are of two types. It is either one way or two way. Let us try to understand what is one way production flow and what is a two way production flow. One way production flow. One way production flow is a progressive system in which it is not possible to transport back. Transport is done by hand or other methods. It is usually applied in the following three types. Straight line or conveyor methods use one way production flow. Progressive line or synchro flow uses one way production flow. Progressive bundle units use one way production flow. As you can see in this picture, an example of straight line or conveyor system how a bundle movement is done. It is one way and the bundle is moved from, from one operation to the next operation and it does not go back. It takes a zigzag method and is flown in one direction. The next example of a one way production flow is that of a progressive line or synchro flow. In either of the cases, as you can see in the picture, it clearly shows the bundle movement is one way irrespective of the type of production system or the output. The bundles move from one operator to the next operator, sinking at a central operator, but do not come back for excess operations. The third example of a one way production flow is that of a progressive bundle unit. If you can see here, each operator produces and moves on to rack 2 and then from rack 2 it is moved to operation number 2. From operation number 2 it moves to rack 3. But note here that the bundles do not come back or take a trial back. They move from step 1 and progress towards step 2, 1, 3. So this is a very good example of one way production flow. 
the next type of production flow would be your two way production flow in this type of system flow of wip it is two way there are three types of two way production systems one is the central storage system the next one is an interflow system flow of wip and finally it is a selector type i repeat i repeat it is the central storage system interflow system of the flow of wip and finally the selector type as you can see this picture depicts how the wip moves in case of a central storage there is a central storage and all the operations are around the central storage so if necessary the operations can go and come back it could be either multi directional so this helps if the same operation needs to be done again or the same machinery used to be done again for a different operation this picture is a very good example of a central storage system next comes interflow system if you look at the picture it might look complicated but then this system is basically helpful in the flow of wip in between departments or let's say in between sub assemblies as you can see there are a couple of racks in between operators that helps in following a proper flow of system which is the interflow finally we have the selector type here you can see the operators are centrally located and the flow of the wip is around the operators so the operator can select the pieces required and then move put back the bundle if not required and the operations are based solely on what the operator is doing the wip moves and comes to the operator and the operator is stationary now let's move on to production systems any production system has four primary factors which make up the system processing time plus transportation time plus temporary storage time plus inspection time all these four processes totals up to total production time let me reiterate the processing time plus transportation time plus temporary storage time and plus inspection time totals up to the total production time processing time is the sum total of working time of all the operations that are involved in manufacturing of a garment next comes transportation time transportation time involves the time taken to transport semi finished or finished garments from one department to another or from one operation or machine to another this also includes the time taken to move the inventory to each department next we have the temporary storage time temporary storage time is the time during which the garment or the bundle is idle as it waits for the next operation or for completion of certain parts inspection time is the time taken for inspecting semi finished garments for any defects during manufacturing or inspecting fully finished garments before packing 
to just have a review processing time is the sum total of all the working time of all operations transportation times involves the time taken to move garments one one from one place to another it could refer to raw or semi finished garments or finished garments next we have the temporary temporary storage time which refers to the idle time in which no value addition is given to the garment and finally we have the inspection time this time is necessary to ensure standard quality in the garment the main aim of any production system is to achieve minimum possible total production time this automatically reduces in process inventory and its cost the sub assembly system reduces temporary storage time to zero by combining temporary storage time with transportation time now we come to understand what are the various types of manufacturing systems involved in garments the principles of choosing a production system includes mission and poli policies of manufacturing firm capabilities of the personnel engaged we should know what our team is capable of doing lot size lot size refers to the volume that can be produced in the particular production system style changes frequency this refers to the frequency of style change then we have labor skill we should be pretty well aware of what is the status of our labor so that we can find out whether we can produce a specific set of garment throughput time we should have a clarity on what the time is to get a product out of a line so that refers to throughput time difficulty in balancing a well balanced chain will also always help in understanding and figuring out the right production system and finally we have the process or product layout the process or the product layout forms the basis for selection of any of the production system because we need to break down all our processes as well as the product to have a clarity on how we need to set up our production system we would be going through and understanding the following make through system conventional bundle system clump system progressive bundle system also known as pbs flexi flow system straight line system synchro flow system unit production system also known as ups and the final one would be modular system let us try to understand what is make through system make through system is one of the most traditional method of manufacturing in this particular make through system an operator makes right through one garment at a time in the sense one garment will be completely made or sewed and cut by the operator that is one operator will do all the stages of the sewing operations of one garment and after completing it he or she will go for the next garment here you can see examples of make through system our traditional next door tailor is a very good example of make through system let us look at the advantages and disadvantages of make through system 
First, the advantages. You have quick throughput time. It is easier to supervise as it is one garment per operator. We have lesser WIP because one operator completely takes care of one particular garment. We have a faster output and it can be used where technology level is low. Whereas the disadvantages are also need to be looked at. We have very low productivity because it takes time for one garment to get completed as it is done by one single operator. It has very high labor cost and also it requires a highly experienced operator for processing. This process is only suitable for highly fashioned garments and sample making and is certainly not effective for bulk production. The best example one can give for make through would be the boutiques where the customer places an order of one piece and the boutique tailor would sew it from cut to finish. Now let us look into the second type of production system which is the conventional bundle system. Under this there is a central store supervisor who is connected to various operators inside the sewing line. In this type of bundle system the central store supervisor as depicted in the flow chart goes to, a part goes to the particular operator to provide pieces for sewing and for processing. So the operators are not linked to each other and each bundle is given and taken from an operator and then the store supervisor moves on to the operator number 2, 3 and so on and so forth. The conventional bundle system is a traditional bundle system where pieces are bundled together and passed from one operator to another. Now we look at another system called the clump system. It is another variation of the conventional bundle system which we just reviewed. Instead of a distribution supervisor and a central store, a central table is used. Now the operator himself or herself collects, finishes and returns the bundle to the particular table. Next operators do the same. So the only connecting point for each operator here is the central table. The clump system is a variation of the conventional bundle system. Now we look into one of the most common and widely used type of production system. Yes, I am talking about the progressive bundle system also referred to as PBS. The main feature of this particular bundle system is that parts of various components are tied in with bundles and then they are further distributed down out to the operators. Bundle ticket is attached to the components. So each bundle will have a unique ticket number and unique bundle ID tag. This is done so that none of the pieces get mixed inside the bundle and each piece is tickered with respect to the bundle ticket. One operator is expected to perform the same operation on all the pieces on the bundle. The bundle size could vary from a bundle of 5 pieces or a bundle of 10 pieces or it could go on till 20 or 30 depending upon the product type. So as you can see in this flow chart, operator 1 completes a bundle and moves the bundle to operator 2. When operator 2 completes sewing all the pieces in the bundle, it is again moved on to operator 3. Now let us look at the advantages of the progressive bundle system or in short PBS advantages. It gives very high productivity once we use with high utilization. A higher standard of work is produced 
because a particular operator works on the same operation over a course of several bundles. Consistency is present both in the output as well as in the quality. Semi-skilled workforce is enough and can be utilized and can be bettered when it comes to progressive bundle system. It is easier to develop skills of the labor force in this type of production system. When we are looking at disadvantages, the first and foremost disadvantage is that it has high machine investment and it is not effective for short run production because when a particular order is broken into bundles, it needs to be on a higher volume so that the operator will be able to develop the skill and maintain the quality and high standard of output. It involves higher material handling and transportation. It gets difficult to supervise in PBS and eventually it works with very high WIP. WIP in the sense work in progress. It needs really, really good line balancing skills for effective supervision so that the production is balanced across all the operations in a sewing line. The PBS that is the progressive bundle system is one of the most common and widely used systems. Now let us look at another form of production system which is known as flexi flow system. It is but a modified version of PBS. In flexi flow system in one setup more than one style can be executed. In the sense when there are parallel lines running any style can be produced anywhere that is what refers to flexi flow system. Flexibility in adopting the changes wherever required. As you can see in the picture depicted, this is a really good example of flexible flow system. Flexi flow system is a modified version of PBS wherein a mix of colors and mix of styles are introduced. Let's look at another variation of production system which is straight line production system. In this type of production system, the manufacturing operation is broken down to smaller operations which basically refers down to operation breakdown and elemental breakdown. The operations take the same or almost the same time to complete. So the tuck time of each operation is calculated. One bundle or one piece is handled by on one operator at one time. The movement can be in trays or on center tables or a conveyor can be used in a straight line system. This is again one of the most more traditionally used production system. Let us look at the advantages and the disadvantages. The advantages of a straight line system would be faster throughput with lesser WIP. It also produces a higher standard of work content. It has le lesser material handling time because the pieces go through a central table or through conveyor. Semi-skilled workforce can be used here as well and the space required is much lesser compared to other production systems. Let's look at the disadvantages. It is not flexible. Absenteeism can cause problems and may disturb the sewing line. It is not effective for short run production and very high investment is required. Also needs line balancing skills for effective supervision and high standard of work measurement. The straight line system is broken down into smaller operations. Let us look at something called synchro flow system. It is a modified version of a straight line system. 
as you can see in the picture components of same size and color are prepared separately in the sense sub assembly activities are done separately and the main assembly is a common activity wherein all the sub assemblies come to one place and it is assorted to feed the main assembly the main advantage here is it is easier to supervise synchro flow system is a modified version of a straight line system this particular production system is what is called unit production system that is in industrial terminologies ups it is one of those systems which utilizes one piece movement that is single piece movement transportation in this system can be done either by the operator themselves or by hangers the most common utilization would be hangers all the components are bundled in case of manual handling the system is advanced with edi for effective wip control single piece tracing it is really utilized for measuring and improving system efficiencies as depicted in the picture ups can is very effective for single piece movement let us also look at the advantages and disadvantages of ups advantages would include faster throughput with lesser wip this is because single piece movement is utilized here high standard of work because each operator does only one kind of work and there is a minimum material handling time as you can see in ups there are no bundles and the operator only uses one piece at a time it improves ergonomics no or minimum chances of straining of garments this is because the pieces are coming through overhead rails and it is not being passed on on the floor or on the table it has improved quality with consistency and finally it is effective for single piece tracking it will ensure that no piece goes missing and each piece is being looked upon to when we look at disadvantages for ups it involves very high investment for electronic ups systems it needs really good line balancing skills for effective supervision and high standard of work measurement again this is not effective for a short run production because in case of short run production the volumes will be less and it is difficult to input in the electronic ups system and to rework on the line setup downtime becomes a major problem because in the case of ups even if one machine has an error the whole line comes to a stand still because this method practices single piece tracking ups that is unit production system is a one piece movement with transportation can be done either by the operator themselves or by hanger now the final kind of production system we would be looking at is modular production system a group of people who are working together to accomplish individual goals effectively and efficiently while simultaneously accomplishing goals of the team or organization or a team is a small number of people with complementary skills who are committed to common purpose set of performance goals and approach for which they hold themselves mutually accountable this is the general definition of modular production systems the line layout in modular production would be a u shaped with garments progressing around the line the main highlight of modular production system is that each operator is cross trained on different portions of the line that is continuous operation 
depending upon the skills and operation complexity. Ideally, all the operators are cross-trained on all operations. Thus, operators work to predominantly predetermined adjacent tasks. Each operator is assigned to at least one operation and on a minimum. As you can see in this machine layout, this machine layout is an example of modular production system. The main highlights being multi-skilled operators are being used, number of machines are ideally more than the number of men. Operators move from one machine to another to do the task and this is the reason why we mention that the operators should be cross-trained. Another highlight here being there are no helpers. The material movement done by the operator themselves in between operations. Again, the quality also is maintained by the operator themselves. As you can see, no QAs, that is no quality auditors, there is only periodic quality audits. Let us look at the advantages of modular production systems and the disadvantages as well. Under advantages, we have faster throughput with lesser WIP, high standard of work and minimum material handling time. This is because the operator do the material handling by themselves. Higher resource utilization because the man is to machine ratio is comparatively less. The number of machines are higher compared to the number of men being used inside the line. It improves team spirit and manpower motivation. It is quick to response and flexible because of the lesser man is to machine ratio. It is good for both shorter and longer runs of production. The disadvantages here would be extra machinery required. Why? In case of any machine downtime, alternative machines needs to be put so that it does not disrupt the flow of the production system. It further needs really high line balancing skills. Here we use the term dynamic line balancing for the best usage of modular system. In the modular production system, the line layout is U-shaped with garments progressing around the line. Let us look in detail what are the various types of production system, understanding their advantages, disadvantages, definition and their flow. Now that we have come to the end of this unit, let us summarize what all we have studied. We have studied about various bundle handling systems as well as WIP control. We have also come across the different types of production systems like PBS, UPS, modular manufacturing. Hope you guys have had a clear idea on what production systems are. Thank you.